Hi, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. In this video, I share my top IELTS speaking tips to save you preparation time and to increase your chances of scoring high marks in your test. For many students, the speaking test is the most challenging part of the IELTS exam. This is for two main reasons. You have very little thinking time before answering a question and it can be difficult to practice speaking English. Neither of these issues applies to writing, reading and listening. For these other parts of the exam, you do have at least a little time to consider your answers without an examiner sitting in front of you expecting an immediate response. Also, it's simple to sit down and practice writing English, reading an English magazine or listening to an English podcast. To practice speaking English is another matter altogether. Who do you talk to? What do you talk about? With these nine speaking tips, you'll overcome the challenges and be well prepared when the day of your test arrives. So here are my nine top speaking tips. One, commit to speaking English every day. Two, practice answering IELTS style questions. 3. Grow your vocabulary. 4. Know the exam. 5. Understand what you'll be tested on. 6. Know your strengths and weaknesses. 7. Practice identifying grammatical structures. 8. Focus on fluency. And 9. Work on your pronunciation. We'll now go through them one at a time. For some of the tips, I put links to web pages on my website, ieltsjackie.com, where there are lots more details. You'll find the links in the notes below this video. Tip 1. Commit to speaking English every day. The great thing is, you don't have to have a speaking partner to practice speaking English. And for the first of our speaking tips, you don't need anyone else. The technique I recommend you use will teach you not just to speak English, but to think in English. This is one of the most valuable skills you can develop. Learning to think in English will help you to speak faster and with greater accuracy and fluency. You'll quickly see a massive improvement in your speaking skills. It's a very simple technique and will fit easily into your everyday life. I explain it in detail on the website. There's also a video about it on my YouTube channel. Just follow the link below. The only way to improve your speaking skills is to practice. Plan a timetable with a set number of mock speaking tests each week. You might, for example, do one every other day or on three set days each week. Only you know how much time you have available to focus on the speaking part of the exam and how much more practice you need. If you're keeping to the timing of the test, each one will take less than 15 minutes. Although, do allow yourself more thinking time while you're learning how to develop answers for the different parts of the test. I've put lots of resources on the website to make practicing easy for you. These include 30 full mock tests covering 30 different topics. That's 330 questions in all. Download them on the IELTS Speaking Questions page via the link below. There are more speaking practice questions with sample answers on the topic pages as well. If you have someone to ask you the questions and time your answers, that's great, but don't worry if you haven't. However, if you are practicing alone, it's important to speak your answers out loud, just as you will in the test. And I recommend that you record yourself, then you can play it back later to listen out for specific things you need to improve. There's also plenty of step-by-step -step help on the website for developing part 1, 2 and 3 answers, as well as help to avoid common errors. This is just some of the invaluable information you'll find there. My third tip for success in the IELTS speaking test 
is to grow your vocabulary. Vocabulary makes up 25% of your marks for the speaking and writing parts of the IELTS exam. Knowing a broad range of words is also essential for scoring highly in listening and reading. However, vocabulary is even more important than this because, well, it's what language is. Language is words used in a structured way to communicate meaning. For the IELTS exam, the key to success is knowing, firstly, what vocabulary to use, and secondly, how to learn it, which is why I've created pages on both these topics. What you learn on them will help you with the writing, listening and reading parts of the test as well. Again, look for the links to these pages below. Tip 4 is know the exam. To do well in IELTS speaking, it's vital that you understand the format of the test. If you know exactly what to expect, you'll already be a step closer to achieving the result you want. You'll be well prepared and not facing surprises on the day that will prevent you from doing your best. Everything you need to know is included in the IELTS speaking part 1, 2 and 3 pages I've already mentioned. I recommend checking them out as soon as you can. So many candidates do badly in the test simply because they don't know this basic information. Please don't be one of them. Tip 5, understand what you'll be tested on, is one of the most important. If you don't know what the examiner is looking for, how can you be sure that you're giving it to them? Don't risk a low grade simply because you fail to understand what the test is really about. The IELTS speaking test is designed to assess your ability to communicate opinions and information on everyday topics and common experiences, to speak at length on a given topic using appropriate vocabulary, organise your ideas coherently, express and justify your opinions and to analyse and discuss and speculate about issues. The examiner will mark you in relation to four specific areas of language. Fluency and coherence, vocabulary, grammar and pronunciation. They each hold 25% of the marks. Equally important is what you are not tested on. You won't be assessed on the content of what you say. You won't be tested on your knowledge or your intelligence. And you are not expected to be an expert on the subjects they ask you about. The examiner just wants to hear your opinions and how well you communicate them. That's it. Tip 6. Know your strengths and weaknesses. One of the challenges of being a language learner is that you can't always recognise your own mistakes. However, you will be aware of what you are good at and what aspects of your language skills you really need to work on. This is the subject of the six of our IELTS speaking tips. Be totally honest with yourself. Which of the four areas of assessment is your weakest? Maybe it's particular aspects of several of these. Identify where you need to make the most improvement and plan your timetable accordingly. If you give equal emphasis to the things you've already mastered and those you're not so good at, then you're wasting valuable preparation time. Earlier, I suggested recording yourself speaking English. When you do this, you'll notice things that need improvement that you might not otherwise be aware of. Here are some of the sorts of things you might notice. You repeat the same words and expressions frequently rather than varying your vocabulary. You pause and hesitate a lot. Your voice is monotone with little variation in your intonation. You focus too much on grammatical accuracy at the expense of fluency. Don't be worried about your errors as they're part of the learning process. Just recognise them and use them to improve. Tip 7. Practice identifying grammatical structures. 
Using the correct tense is obviously an important aspect of grammatical accuracy. However, it's very common for candidates to use the wrong tense when answering questions, despite it being a pretty basic error. The result is that they don't actually answer the question. This sort of mistake occurs all too frequently in the speaking test, and it's one of the main reasons why people score poorly for grammar. There's a simple way to avoid this problem. Identify the tense the examiner uses in their question and use the same one in your answer. Let me show you what I mean with a poor answer and a good one. Question. Have you ever been abroad? Sabira. I'm going to the USA in September. The question is asked in the past tense but the answer is given in the future tense. Because of this, Sabira hasn't actually answered the question. Here's a better answer. No, I've never visited a foreign country, but I'm going to the USA in September. Not only does Sabira correctly use the past tense in the first part of her answer, she also adds a second clause in the future tense. This will earn her good marks and this time she answers the question properly. So here are the two key rules. Answer the question and answer using the same tense as in the question. For practice, get a friend to read out a list of simple questions and see if you can quickly identify the verb tense in each one. Tip 8. Focus on fluency. For this tip, we're going to go a step further with the technique I introduced to you in step one, learning to think in English. Poor fluency is often caused by the fear of making mistakes. This leads to the speaker pausing and hesitating far too much or speaking too slowly as they try to get their grammar and vocabulary perfect. Since fluency carries 25% of the marks, you need to get a good balance between correct language and fluent speech. The only way to do this is to practice. The method I'm going to suggest is something for you to do on your own so that you aren't worried about making mistakes. There are many ways you could do it, but here are two. Method 1. Towards the end of the day, think of one thing that went really well or that you are happy about and something that could have been better. Talk out loud about them for one minute, focusing on fluency. This will be great practice for using the past tense, but also conditionals and modals. For example, if I had, or I should have. These are more advanced grammar and will impress the examiner if you use them. Method two. Choose a photo in a newspaper or magazine and talk out loud about it for at least a minute. Again, focus on fluency rather than perfect grammar and vocabulary. You can work on these at another time. Here are a few ideas as to what to say. Introduce the subject matter. Describe what you can see. Talk about any activity that's going on in the photo. This would be the present tense. Guess what might have been going on before the photo was taken. This would be the past tense. And suggest what might happen next. You'll need to use the future tense for this. If you vary the type of subject matter you choose for this activity, you'll be practicing a wide variety of language. For example, choose a picture of a beautiful room or landscape one day and a topical news item the next. Record and play back your talks to assess your fluency. It will very quickly begin to improve. Tip 9. Work on your pronunciation. Pronunciation should perhaps have come top of our list of IELTS speaking tips. Why? Because if you have poor pronunciation and the examiner can't understand what you're saying, they have no way of assessing your English language skills. 
you won't be expected to sound like a native English speaker. Indeed, many nationalities speak English, and each has their own accent and slightly different ways of using intonation. What you will be assessed on is how easily the examiner can understand you and how well you pronounce the key sounds of the English language. Pronunciation is generally the last skill that English learners master, so the requirement for a high band score, say band 7 and above, are actually quite low. Having said that, any small improvements you can make will increase your marks. Use these four methods. First, listen to spoken English every day. There are many ways to do this. The IELTS resources page on my website has links to lots of free resources that I recommend for listening. Podcasts and radio shows are better than TV and videos because you'll only be listening to the language rather than being distracted by the visuals. You'll find spoken material on almost any subject you can imagine. Second, really focus in. Record short extracts from these sources and replay them over and over again so that you can study and copy the stress and intonation. Third, when you learn new words, make sure that you learn and practice their pronunciation as well. All good online dictionaries have an audio button so that you can hear the word spoken as well as seeing the phonetic transcription of how each word is pronounced. I especially recommend the Cambridge Online Dictionary. I've also added audio tracks to all my topic vocabulary pages so that you can hear the correct pronunciation of all the words and phrases. Fourth, identify common L1 errors. It can be really helpful to identify the common pronunciation errors in your native language, known as your L1 language, so that you can focus in on them, or at least be aware of where the key pronunciation challenges may lie. Just Google the phrase, common pronunciation mistakes in English for speakers. Insert your own language in the space. You should find several websites that list common errors in your native language. This is one of the best tips for improving your pronunciation that I can give you. That brings us to the end of our top 9 IELTS speaking tips. Do read all the pages I've directed you to. They'll help you with everything I've talked about and are also packed full of additional tips. I've covered lots in this video. Now it's up to you to put it all into practice and move closer to getting the IELTS score you want. Thanks for listening and goodbye for now.